So what I want to do, I want to dig into the Word because, man, I'm telling you, uh, I'm excited uh, about today's Word, and I'm excited that you're here to hear from God. I really believe that God gives me Word. Uh, I don't play the little preacher game. I really believe that God still speaks. I still believe He still heals, delivers, and set free. I believe every word in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, everything in between that God is alive. But you know what? we got to fight. we got to fight. So today, what I want to do, I want to go part two. In this series that we're calling, A Fight Worth Fighting. A Fight Worth Fighting. Last week I told you guys, uh, there are some things in life just not worth fighting for. Come on now. There are some things in life just not worth fighting for. If it's not eternal, and I want you to listen to me, because I, I really believe Satan is messing with God's people, keeping us busy, busy B-U-S-Y, being under Satan's joke. He's keeping us busy about things that are not eternal, things that really just don't matter. It just don't matter. So listen, you, the Bible says in Proverbs, choose your battles wisely. The battles are coming, but God says choose them wisely. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I told you last week, too, that there are some things in life worth fighting for. Y'all ready? You're worth fighting for. You're eternal. That's exactly right. There's some things in life worth fighting for. So we're going we're gonna to dig into that today. And I told you the number one thing last week worth fighting for, you got to fight for the fragrance. you got to fight for the fragrance. Everybody say, fight for the fragrance. Come on. Come on, this side. Everybody say, fight for the fragrance. you got to fight for the fragrance. And we're going to talk about that, okay? So if you have your Bible, John chapter 12 is where we're going to be going. John 12. I love you guys so much. I am blessed, and it is an honor to be your pastor. It really is. I love you deeply and dearly, and thank you for allowing me this, this time. John 12, 1 through 11. It's a little reading, but I, I like this. I like this. How many of you know the Word of God will do the will of God, and the will of God will do the work of God? I can't say it again, but that's what I said. John 12, verse 1 through 11. Here we go. Y'all ready? Say amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five, and say, it's preaching time. Come on, it's preaching time. Here we go. I'm excited. The Bible says, reading out the NIV, six days before the Passover, John 12, 1 through 11, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Y'all remember John 11, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Here we go. He was there having dinner. They were there having dinner given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table. Hallelujah. I felt that. And then y'all, men were reclining at the table. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the women were cooking in the meat. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who y'all are. <laughs> they, they were, he was reclining. That's the way I read the Bible, man. It's just funny sometimes, you know. So the, man was, the men were reclining at the table. And look at this. Then Mary, verse 3. Took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet, and, and she wiped his feet with her hair. She wiped his feet with her hair. She wiped his feet with her hair. What a humbling position this must have been. And the house, notice what happened. After she humbled herself, she broke the worship, she broke the fragrance, she wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. All of a sudden, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Last week, the fragrance filled the house. We talked about that. Y'all remember? The fragrance filled the house. But watch this. But one of the disciples, everybody say, there's always one. Golly, there's always somebody. Watch here. Judas. And everybody said, well, Brian, he, we, he betrayed Jesus. Yeah, but he was a disciple. He, he saw signs, wonders, and miracles. Watch this. He, he was a good church member. He, he took the money up in the church. So you can't say, well, well, Brian, he didn't know. Listen, he knew better. But watch this. There's always one who was later to betray him objected. Why what was he objecting? Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's worth of wages. He did not say this. It's important you get this. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, <laughs> but because he was a thief. He, as a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. They put the offering in the bag, and he, he stole the money out of the bag. Oh, man, we got a problem, Houston. And I love this. Watch this. Verse 7, I love this. Leave her alone. How many of you know when worship is going off in the house, there's always going to be a Judas in the house? 
There's always going to be the spirit of Judas. And watch this. God, I love it. Jesus still said, leave her alone. You ain't a big enough boy to mess her up. And Jesus replied, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Verse 9, meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and they came. Now listen to this. If, 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 if the devil cannot get you from the inside, he's going to try to get you from the outside. If there's not a Judas on the inside of the church, there will always be a religious leader on the outside trying to mess up what God, hallelujah, is doing on the inside. And y'all know this is truth. And here's what, listen to this. Here's why what it said, they, they came not only for Jesus, but also for Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Verse 10. So the chief priests, we talked about this last week, they sat down, think about this. They sat down, had a conversation. Here's what they said. They started making plans how they could kill Lazarus. And that's exactly what the enemy is doing today. How can we stop Brian Rafferty? How can we stop Elkhorn Baptist Church? How can we stop the anointing of God flowing like a river? How can we stop the fragrance? It's exactly what the enemy's doing. If not on the inside, he's on the outside. Watch this. Here, here's why. Y'all ready? And I thought about Elkhorn when I read verse 11. It's, it's amazing. Listen to this. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. All right. Because this is good. You don't want to miss this sermon, I'm telling you. For on account of him, on account of Lazarus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. You want to mess up hell? You want to make the devil start having nightmares? Start winning souls for Jesus Christ. You start being a soul winner and a life changer, it messes up, it wakes up hell, and the activity will start. Watch this. I told you last week, the first thing that you got to fight for is you got to fight for the fragrance. Everybody say, fight for the fragrance. Number two. And y'all, if you're, if you're a note taker, take this down. You got to fight to stay full. Whew, my God, I already feel the Holy Ghost. You got to fight to stay full. Everybody say, fight to stay full now here we go the bible says now y'all ready for this right you got to hang on to me the bible says in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 don't you know i love this don't you know that you yourselves are god's temple god's temple and that god's spirit dwells in you listen to this i, I listen i'm telling you this means something to me Jenna, when I'm up here and I can sit there and say, you know who lives in me? Anger don't live in me. You know who lives in me? His name is the Holy Spirit, the third in the Trinity. That means something to me. I know a lot of people, a lot of churches don't pay attention to the third part of the Trinity, but watch this. Three is just as important as one, and two is important as three, and one is important as two. Listen, you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Does that get y'all happy and fired up? Boy, it does me. There's something about that. But the Holy Spirit lives. He dwells. He resides. Watch this. Y'all know, know the Holy Spirit's address? Brian Rafferty. The whole, you are, watch this. You are the Holy Spirit's address. That's where he lives. And that means something to me. And to all the people who don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost, you don't believe in the Bible. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit lives in you and He just don't sit there dormant waiting for something to happen. He is active and sharpening, hey, two-edged sword. So He's alive, He's well, and guess what? If He's alive and if He's well in me, guess what that makes me? Alive and well. Alive. I'm going somewhere, y'all help me preach. Now listen, I'm not a mechanic. Everybody say, b Ralph's not a mechanic. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> a lot of people is laughing because they know. I am not by no means a mechanic. But listen, I've I, I, I done some checking up on Google. How many of y'all know when Google talks? Google's like E.F. Hutton, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I looked at this, but the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration says, now listen, we're talking about, uh, about being full of Jesus, being full of the fragrance. They said the first thing that happens with a tire that is under inflation when, when, it's, when it's not full, when, when it's, when it's not, don't have enough air in it, 
When, in other words, when one's low and one's up and one's full and one's not, the Highway Traffic and Safety Administration says the first thing that happens to an underinflated tire, it will shorten the tire's life. It will shorten the tire's life. Number two, what it says, the tire will begin to lose its shape. Oh, I'm going somewhere. So if you're under inflation, it, you're, the first thing it says, you're short, really shortening your life. The second thing it says, the tire will begin to lose its shape. If the tire doesn't stay full, the tire, hallelujah, will lose its shape. How often do y'all hear this? I'm just going to ask you real quick before I get back in my sermon. How many of y'all hear this before? Man, that guy really snaps quick. How many of y'all have ever heard this before? Boy, they're bent out of what? It's funny, God's got purpose with everything, even a tire that's been blown out and even a tire that's full of, full of air. God's got a purpose for it. I want y'all to listen to how this relates. Y'all listen to me say amen because i got to get this word in your spirit. So I, I'm just wondering, is it the reason why many people snap and they're easily angered and they get bent out of shape is because they're just not full. They're not full, they're empty. And if they're empty, they start getting bent out of shape and they lose their size and they start getting hot-headed. Watch this. Number three, the tire will lose its ability to steer correctly. Oh, God. You ever thought about this, man? You shorten your life because you're really living on borrowed time anyway. How many of y'all know that's true? The next thing you know, man, you'll start losing your shape. The third thing is that, that you'll start losing control. Oh, I'm preaching good. Number four, here's what the, the, they, they said. The tire will start warming up, getting really hot. Really, really hot. Loses its shape. Gets all uh, crazy. Start losing control. And the next thing you know it says, it starts warming up. It gets really, really hot. And the last thing it says, if you don't pull over, if you don't check it out, if you don't start getting full, the Bible says, well, it says this, eventually the tire will blow out. The tire will blow out. <laughs> See, I want y'all to listen to me. The Bible says, I love this, Mary took that bottle of perfume and she broke it. And she then she poured the, the oil, the fragrance on Jesus' feet. She took her hair. She wiped his feet. And I love what the Bible says. The Bible don't say that the oil just stayed in Mary's presence. The Bible says that the fragrance filled the atmosphere. The fragrance of God filled the atmosphere. And y'all know what happened. I got to preach this a little bit. You know what happened Sunday at Elkhorn Baptist Church? The fragrance started filling the air. And the tears started coming down. The altar started getting full to Two souls got saved and 10 people got healed. Oh, come on, church. You know God's worth that praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. That's what happened. I'm telling you, when you break the worship, when you break the ordinary and you do something you've never done before, it will fill the atmosphere. I'm telling you, reports like rheumatoid arthritis is gone, it's in remission. That's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I went back to the doctor. I had a place on my face, and they thought it was skin cancer. And they took a biopsy of it, and they come back, and it's, they didn't find no cancer. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a husband and wife who was not getting along on the threshold of a divorce and bent down right here at the altar and said, God, you, hey, you've done something in my life, and I smell the fragrance of God. They got full. He said, Brian, settle down. No, settle up. I'm just telling y'all in Jesus' name, you got to fight to stay full. Because if you don't, y'all listen to me, if you don't fight to stay full, it's just a matter of time you're going to take a detour in your life. It's just a matter of time. I promise you, you're, you're, you're going to lose control. You're wanting to go this way. And all of a sudden, you're, you don't have enough air. You don't have enough Holy Ghost. You don't have enough fragrance in you. You're under inflation. And the next thing you know, you're going to be driving them tires, that Holy Spirit. Listen to me. You're going to get hot. You're going to become angry. You're going to become the person you said you would never become. And the next thing you know, because of the underinflation of, of the Holy Spirit in your life, the next thing you know, there's going to be a spiritual blowout in your life. And you can take it to the bank. Spiritual. Spiritual. But listen, if you don't have the fragrance, listen to me. If you don't have the fragrance 
And if you don't stay full, how many of you know you got to fight to stay full? You got to fight to stay full. All of a sudden, you'll start losing your shape. Mm hmm. Yeah, you, you won't be able to steer your life and go the direction you wanted to go. You, you watch this, you say, How many of you ever heard this? They are out of control. They're out of control. <laughs> they're warming up, boy. They're getting mad. They got an attitude problem, boy. I'm telling you, I never heard them cuss like that before. And the next thing you know, if you don't grab a hold and check yourself, the bottom line is you're heading for a spiritual blowout in your life. I promise you. Y'all know I'm preaching truth. Y'all know I am preaching truth. You know why all that happens? Because you're underinflated. You're not full. Here, watch this. You're not full. You're not full. I'm not going to tell you what, what they call it in Kentucky. Y'all know how you check a tire? You, you know how you check a tire to make sure it's full? Gauge. A gauge. You've got to gauge the tire. <laughs> Think about how simple this stuff is. God uses a tire. For heaven's sake, he's that good. Uses a tire in a sermon on Sunday morning. And some of you are looking at me. I'm telling you, listen, you've got to put a gauge on it. Everybody say, you've got to put a gauge on it. Come on, say, you've got to put a gauge on it. Listen, you've got to gauge the tire to see if it's low or full. So simple, but we make it so crazy. You got to check it. Same way, watch this. Same way with the Christian. <laughs> Same way with the Christian. Listen to me very carefully. You better gauge your spiritual walk with God. You got to gauge yourself, check yourself. Come on, help me. You got to examine yourself, not just a Sunday, one day a week. Watch this. B Ralph's got to check himself every day he wakes up. I sure do. I got to check myself. Because I'm telling you, if you're not full, y'all ready? You're going to start wobbling. <laughs> you're going to be a wobbly Christian. You're not going to have no stability in your life. <laughs> your tires are going to be, I'm, you're going to be out. One tire is going to fill it. The other tire's not. One Sunday you're going to fill it. The next Sunday you're not. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. The next thing you know, you're going down the road and you're going to say, you smell something? It smells like rubber's burning. Watch out! Blow out! Yes, yeah, blow out. And how many of you know when you have a blowout, it's really out of control then? Me and Dana was heading to Lexington. How many of you know, let me go ahead and tell you all something. Don't go shopping right now. In Jesus' name, hey, hey. Don't, 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 don't go. Don't, don't in Jesus' name. I feel don't, no, because 20 minutes trying to find one parking spot. And everybody, everybody wanting that same, and two people turn the blinker on at the same time. How many you know somebody's going to win? <laughs> but anyway, we was heading toward Lexington. Listen to me very carefully. We were heading toward Lexington, got on the parkway. About five miles down the road, man, all of a sudden, we seen a car on the left hand, on the other side of the parkway. Thank God. Everybody say, thank God. And he was coming down through there, and I'm telling you, he was doing this. Doing that. And I noticed his front tire was, -doom, 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 -doom. I mean, just going crazy. And this man was fighting as hard as he could to keep it on the road. And boy, God's preaching really good. So often it's what we do. Our life is out of control, but we're fighting so hard to keep it on the road. And the reason why you're out of control is because you're not full of the fragrance of God. <laughs> Bottom line, that's truth. This man, let me tell you, he's crazy, Jenna. Y'all have watched these movies where cars wreck and stuff. This man, he went over in the media and all of a sudden, end over end. End over end and coming toward me and Dana. So I slammed on my brakes. This is a true story. And I could literally see him, Sarah, when, when he was that going end over end and tumbling like that. I'd still see it. You should have seen him inside that car. He was a rag doll. He was being tossed to and fro, out of control, trying to fight the wheel. Listen to me, that is the Christian's life so often. 
So often we are riding on empty. We are driving on empty. We're heading down God's highway and then all of a sudden something starts to happen in our life. It's out of our control and then we start fighting the wheel. Give God the wheel. Let God take control of your life and God will get you to this destination. In Jesus' name, it's just a gauge. Look, Dana Campbell asked me first service. She said, Brian, tell me something. That person who had this blowout, did they live? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is this. Somebody's under my teaching, under my preaching right now. You're in trouble, sir. Ma'am, you're, you're in a blowout stage. And if you don't gauge yourself, <laughs> if you don't start spiritually checking yourself, if you don't start putting a spiritual gauge to your spiritual man or spiritual woman in your life, I promise you, you're going to start wobbling. You're going to be out of control. And something's going to happen. And you're going to be fighting the wheel all along. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up in a ditch. The Bible says, let me show you what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. This is so good. Here's what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. The Bible says, test yourselves. Y'all hear me? Test yourself. You know what, you know what America, you know what church people, you know what religious people are excellent and masters and got a PhD in? They're experts about gauging and checking somebody else's life. Take care of your own bad self. We're the masters about taking a spiritual gauge and saying, well, look at them. We are. See, I don't believe in patty cake church. I believe, the, hallelujah, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I know what God is doing. I know where he's at. He lives in me. And there's got to come a time in your life you've got to spiritually gauge yourself and say, where am I at right now? That's what the Bible says. I didn't write this. I just believe this. Test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Wow. He said, gauge yourself. Test yourself. Examine yourself. To see if you're in what? The faith. And he didn't say see if you're in church. Because see, if you're in the faith, you'll be in church. I talked to a boy the other day. He's like, I'm, I'm going deer hunting. And this is the church. I just taught him as you asked know, I said, have you ever wanted deer to Jesus? I went, well, no. But boy, I can find Jesus in the wilderness. I said, he didn't say forsake not the wilderness. Are y'all okay? Turn to your neighbor and say, are you still breathing? And I say, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me get back to the, let me get back, let me get back. Y'all look at me like, I felt something. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says, test yourself to see if you're what? In the faith. Examine yourself. Listen to this. Watch, watch. Or do you not recognize this is not, this is about yourself? That Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, unless, what'd you say? Unless you fail the test. He said, test yourself, gauge yourself, examine yourself to make sure you're in the faith and some of you are going to fail the test. Oh gosh, I knew this was going to be tough, Mark. But you know what? I'm going to preach it anyhow. Because I know, listen to me, there is a God that is alive and well inside of you. There is a God that still cuts sharp at any two-edged sword. He'll separate the bone marrow from the spirit. God will still do that today. But I'm telling you, we've got to gauge ourselves. Could it be the reason why people are mad and angry and upset and fussing and cussing and doing and chewing all the time? It's because they're not full. 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 Whatever you're full of is what will come out of your life. That's what my granny said. Whatever is in you, it will come out of you. Hallelujah. I hear people, listen to me. If you don't gauge and examine or check yourself, the fragrance system in your life, 
If you don't check the fragrance in your life, you're going to get hurt. Did y'all hear me? If, if you don't get hurt, you're going to hurt somebody else. You will. You're going to end up in a ditch, you're going to have a blowout, or you're even going to lose your life. I'm telling you it's the truth. I know we don't like sermons like this, but it needs to be preached. We've got to gauge yourself. What if I told you all, all they have to do is gauge it. If, there's not, if it's not full, what do you need to do? Fix it. Fill it up. Fill it up. Fill it up. Everybody say, fill it up. We're going to say it again. Everybody say, fill it up. Yeah, when you pull in, I'm telling you, say, God, fill me up today. God, I'm not going to leave until you fill me up. I'm not going to get out of this church until you fill me up. I'm not going to walk out. I'm not going to back down until hey, the Holy Ghost fills me up. And I'm not leaving. Woo! I'm not leaving. See, a lot of people say, Willie, what's Willie excited about? I'll tell you what he's excited about. He once was lost, but now he's found. He once was in a valley, now he's up on the mountain. He's full of Jesus. That's what he's about. Well, I, I just don't act like that. I'm just, tell, I'm just telling y'all, show me, show me. Show me. I'm, just, I'm just telling y'all. Man, if you had, listen, how many of y'all have ever had a blowout? I have. It will scare you to death. Scare you to death. When that noise that goes off, boom, and you're sitting there fighting. And, I, and listen, if you've never had a blowout, I hope you never do. But I'm telling you in Jesus' name, how do you, how do you not have a blowout? You gauge yourself. How's your, men, how's your marriage? Pastors, how's your ministry? Come on, youth, how's school going? How many, right, how many of you won the Lord this year? That's what I'm talking about. I'm just telling y'all in Jesus' name, if we want a radical, radical, radical season with God and to shake up Campbellsville, Kentucky, Southeast Kentucky, I'm telling you what we need to do in Jesus' name, we got to gauge ourselves. We got to gauge ourselves. And I hear this all the time, Bobby. I know you've heard it, Mitch. You've heard it, Courtney. Y'all have heard this. How many of y'all have ever heard this before? I didn't think God would put on me more than I could handle. That is not, amen. That is not biblical. Come on. That is not even biblical. You know, listen to me. You want me to just tell you something? He don't. He don't. Could it be? Could it be? The reason why you feel like God has put more on you than what you can handle is because you're not full. Because you're not full. You're not full. You're not full of God. You're not full of the fragrance. See, we're more concerned about what's on us, I feel the Holy Ghost, than what's in us. We're more concerned what's on us, what's happening to us, than who's in us. God said that greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. And if God be for me, who can be against me? That I am the head and I am not the tail. He'll bless me going in. He'll bless me coming out. Oh, if y'all didn't get that, let me go on. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Hallelujah. See, but you got to fight. Listen to me, you got to fight. You got to fight to stay full. You men, you got to fight to stay full in your marriage. Daddies, you got to fight to stay full with your children. Hallelujah. I want you right now, as, as a congregation, I want you to stop just for a moment. And I want you to visualize your life through these tires. I think there is a spiritual comparison like never before if we're just glad to serve. Here's, the, here's what's going to happen. Some people are going to come in. They're going to say, Lord, have mercy. You're not full. You're not full. If you can go to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church and walk out the same way you walked in, you've not gauged yourself. You've not gauged yourself. Listen, let me go ahead and break this down to you Kentucky style. I have to do this every day. 
Because listen, I'm telling you there's things in my life that I'm battling. There's things in my life I don't know or I, un I don't understand. But I got to gauge my heart. Because if I don't, I'm going to have a blowout. If you don't gauge yourself and check if you're full or you're empty or you're wobbly or you're out of balance, you're out of control, you're, you're heating up, you're heating up, you're exploding, you're fussing, you're fighting, you're angry. Because you're not full. It is hard to stay full. I battle it every day of my life. I wish I could get up here and tell you guys every Sunday I get up here and I'm just as full, as full, as full as I can be. But there's some Sundays I got to fight to stay full. I make myself worship. That's a fight. No matter if, my, if anybody on that row don't worship, I'm going to worship. I got to fight to worship. I got to fight for my marriage. I got to fight for Elkhorn Baptist Church. I got to fight for my children. It's not time to cower down and to back off and say, well, it's gonna, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. No, no, no. Why don't you start praying and change the atmosphere? Why don't you change the fragrance? Why don't you go from a blowout season to a season where you're full of God? You say, you know what? I don't understand it. But I've gauged myself. And today, I am so full. I smell fragrance. Today, where are you at? Are you this tired? <laughs> Y'all be honest. See, here's the deal. We're, we're going to have an invitation, and people will get up and walk out. I don't understand that. It's time to get it right with Jesus Christ. You can't be full. Now, if y'all get mad at me, it's okay. Because I'm full. Listen to me. Are, are you right here? Are you right here, man? Are you in your life? You're starting to wobble a little bit? Man, you, you, you've lost your staring a little bit? You're warming up. Your attitude's not what it used to be. You're snapping quickly. Snap, crackle, pop. Not Rice Krispies. You're having a snap, crackle, pop moment right now? Things are not going right in your life? And all of a sudden, you're in your car and your front wheel starts going, man, I, this, these tires are new. But did you gauge it? Did you check it? And I'm just telling you, listen, if you, if you don't, I promise you, you're going to smell something. It's going to overheat. And listen, you're going to crash into something, watch me, that you are not prepared to crash into. You're going to end up in a ditch somewhere along the way. And if you're, listen, hallelujah, the Lord just spoke unto me. You're going to end up in a ditch along the way. But if you're full of God, you'll get out and brush yourself off and say, my God, He saved me again. He saved me again. You'll hit somebody head on doing 65 miles an hour. I don't know how, but He saved me again. That's right. That's right because you're full. You're, hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some of y'all are looking at me and say, Brian, what in the world is going on? Listen to me. If you have ever been in that season of your life, you will praise God and you will appreciate this season of your life. That's where I'm at. And people say, Brian, you're too full. How can you get too full? Hallelujah. Where are you at now? Oh, you're on God's highway. You're going to heaven. Yeah, you're going to heaven. You're born again. You're saved. But that doesn't mean you're full. Right now, you could be behind the car, the wheel, and something's starting to shake. Y'all watch me. It's starting to shake your life. You feel it. You feel the tug. You're not the person you thought you would was. You're talking the way that you don't, you don't talk that way. Now little cuss words are coming out of your mouth. You used to be faithful to God. Now, yeah, I mean, you used to be on fire for God. Now, you, you just feel a little, a little shaking in your life going on. A little tug. You want to watch this. You're getting a little bit out of balance. 
You're losing control. You want to go this way, but your car's out of It's going this way. Ooh. And all of a sudden, if you're not careful, you're heading toward a blowout. I come by today. Praise team, you guys come. I come by today to stop. Y'all ready? Here's the gauge. Some of you are wobbly. <laughs> Some of you, <laughs> I'm telling you, you're, you're, you're on fire. And you're, you're smoking a little bit and you're angry a little bit. And, and nothing, watch this, nothing. I, I, God just feeding me. I got to go a little bit deeper. Y'all ready? I know people that have been sitting in churches before, Eddie. Empty. Empty. And I'm talking about wobbling. Gordon, do you know that some people can be Christians, wobbling, and sit in church, and there'll be nothing will look good to you because you're out, you're out of balance. Nothing's going to look good to you. Jesus Christ himself could be preaching today, and you're going to say, did he comb his hair? Why is he wearing a dress? I'm, <laughs> y'all know, I'm telling y'all truth. You can be so wobbly, so out of shape. I've even seen, I I used when Destiny was little, we used to do something to her and she'd go, just, just shake. And I thought it was funny, but God just reminded me, that's what Christians do. Oh, I'm so mad. Oh, you lucky I know Jesus. How y'all like this one? I'm going to knock them out in the name of Jesus. Come on now. This is Kentucky. I know y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's the deal. If you're wobbling this morning, and man, you're shaking, and you're starting to get a little hot, (laughs) and you're heading toward a blowout, you can change that right now. You can change that right now. Because listen, if you're like that, nothing's going to look good to you. They sung four songs. My God. Look at Spencer on them drums. Yeah. Instead of joining in what God is doing, which I feel the Holy Ghost guy. What's going on on the inside of this church? That souls are being saved and lives are being changed. That people from the northeast, south, and west are coming. We got people from Russell County. We had people drive this morning from Louisville, Kentucky. Hallelujah. From Nicholasville. They said from the outside, what's going on on the inside? We got to celebrate God. We can't have a blowout. Y'all got me. You can't. You listen. Listen. You can't have a blowout. Stop it. Check yourself. Gauge yourself. Examine yourself. Where are y'all at? Quit, quit examining everybody else. Quit examining everybody else. So let me ask you, or is this you? Is this you today? You say, look, that tire, boy, it's full. Oh, you know what God just told me? God. I know you say, Brian, you're crazy. I'm just telling y'all. When a tire is full, it can hold the weight. That's what God just spoke to me. Boy, I probably I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. So if you're at the right pressure, God is so good. If you're at the right pressure and the world is coming at you and you feel the weight of the world, ah, you can carry whatever the world is giving you if you're full of God. My God, if you don't get that, you're not going to get it. Somebody give God praise in here. Come on. Come on, hit it, Spencer. Come on, hit it, come on. (laughs) Hallelujah, yes. Why God is moving in a mighty way. This river is open. It's overflow. It's in the flood state up here right now. 
This river's in the flood. I double dog dare y'all to get in this river. The river is in flood state right now. Some of you are not carrying anything because why? You right now are going toward a blowout. And you don't even realize it. You don't even realize right now, oh, Brian, I'm okay. I'm surviving. But you're mad. You're angry. You're vicious. And you're fussing. You're fighting. Nothing's going on. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. If I've ever had a word from God, y'all trusted Jesus in me? Do y'all trust the Jesus in me? This is a word from God. The reason why some of you are, are collapsing <laughs> and you're not carrying the proper weight and you're heading toward a blowout it's because you're not full. You got to fight to stay full. Praise Him, y'all. Listen, no matter if they get it or not, you got to fight to stay full. No matter if they stand, no matter if they clap, no matter what, you got to fight to stay full. Elkhorn, y'all ready? Y'all got to fight to keep the fragrance in the air. So I'm going to ask y'all ready? Is this you? Is this you? Come on, wires are showing. Let me show you. Y'all want to see something crazy? This is a blown out tire. I, I want to show y'all the back of this tire. It's blown out. Some of you if you don't check yourself, if you don't start examining yourself, if you don't start putting a spiritual gauge on your life, y'all ready? Here it is. You are heading toward a blowout. So this altar's open. It's open. How's your marriage? How's your children? How's your attitude? Could it be the reason why you're collapsing is because you're not full? You can't watch. You can't carry it because you're not full. Greg said this morning, I'm going to give him props on this one. He said, this tire reminds me of the flesh. This tire reminds me of the spirit. This tire is blown out. This tire is fresh, good, puffed up, excited. It can carry what God wants to carry. Why? Because it's the spirit. If you're trying to walk in the flesh, it's a matter of time before you blow out. Y'all get the word? The question is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Because some of you, Houston, warning, warning Houston, I'm telling you, some of you, if you don't start checking yourself and examining yourself, you're heading right toward a blowout. And you're going to go end over end. End over end. You end up in a ditch if you don't stay full. So, how many of y'all want to be this tire? Come on, if you want to be full, come on, come on, raise your hand. If you want, if you want, want to be full, raise your hand. Jenna, if you want to be full, raise your hand. I'm serious. If you're not, are you willing to get in the river to fix this? I love y'all. I love you so much. But it's invitation time. It's time to get in the river. It's time to check yourself. It's time to gauge yourself. It's time to examine yourself. Because if not, you're heading toward what? Come on. If you don't, you're heading toward what? But if you check yourself, gauge yourself, you're, you'll stay full. And you always have to check this one too. Because guess what? Whatever condition's going on, whether it's hot or cold, Either your tire or deflate. Oh, that's good. I think about you all the time when I do stuff like this. So, where you at, Jimmy? Dylan, where you at, buddy? Yeah, cool, where you at? When's the last time you gauged yourself? When's the last time you checked yourself? When's the last time you're a little wobbly today? Could it be because you're not full? Father God, I've delivered the mail. I've done what you called me to do. Glory in the highest, dear God. May you be glorified here today. May souls be saved and lives be changed. Lord, thank you, Lord, for every person, Lord, from the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom. And Lord, today, may we all leave full in Jesus' name. Amen. This altar's open, church.